Hello and welcome to Shredder Zoo. Today we are taking a look at the largest kangaroo to ever have lived, the Procoptodon. The Procoptodon is part of Australia's megafauna, a group of animals that resemble living animals, just much bigger, many of which lived and became extinct during the Pleistocene epoch. Procoptodon stood around 2 metres tall, although many sources incorrectly state its height as 3 metres. This could be because Procoptodon could actually reach above its head, giving it a reach of about 3 metres. This is something modern kangaroos cannot do. It would have used this reach to eat leaves from tall bushes and trees that other animals could not reach. It had two enlarged fingers on each hand tipped with curved claws which it could have used to grip tall branches and bring them down to its mouth to feed. The face of Procoptodon is much shorter than modern kangaroos. It's often been described as looking like a kangaroo that has run face first into a wall at high speed. But similar to the short-faced bear I described last time, this short face means that the Procoptodon could process food more easily with its rear teeth. Giving it a stronger bite force, it was able to focus more force upon shearing through the tough branches of the Australian plants that have a tough exterior to prevent drying out, but a soft, nutritious interior. Procoptodon may have been a giant kangaroo, but could it hop like one? There are conflicting reports on this. Some researchers say it was extremely well adapted to hopping by having thick, strong legs with enlarged muscle attachment points for big, strong muscles and tendons. Its foot was also just one big toe, with the other toe bones being reduced in size. This would have made the foot very strong. The problem with Procoptodon hopping lies in its weight. It's estimated that it would have weighed over 500 pounds, that's around 230 kilos. At that weight, the possibility of tendon snapping becomes very real. Other clues lie in its skeleton. Living kangaroos hop at fast speeds and move about on all fours for slow speed travel. This requires a flexible backbone, sturdy tail and hands that can support their body weight. Procoptodon doesn't appear to have had any of these attributes. In fact, it seems more likely that Procoptodon walked with a gait similar to hominids, that's the great apes and humans. Despite its large size, Procoptodon would still have been prey to several of Australia's large predators, like Thylacoleo, the marsupial lion, and Varanus apricius, a huge monitor lizard. The disappearance of Procoptodon from Australia happened around 50,000 years ago, although there is some evidence that they may have survived until as recently as 18,000 years ago. But the earlier date does coincide with the arrival of early humans. Whether this was a big factor in Procoptodon's extinction is still up for debate. Humans are likely to have hunted Procoptodon, although as yet there is no evidence in the fossil record that they did but it seems unlikely that humans could have hunted the species to extinction, as Procoptodon was one of the most common of Australia's marsupials of the time. But what may have contributed to its disappearance was the early human method of fire stick farming, where vast expanses of land are set alight to encourage fresh growth of plants that are more easily consumed than the existing growths already there. This would cause a shift in the availability of plant types that may have suited other herbivorous animals better than Procoptodon, leading to increased strain upon the species. Although again, it is debated as the Procoptodon's favoured food was fairly fire resistant, it is not thought to have been affected by fire a great deal. Kangaroos do have an elongated breeding cycle, and this means that recovering from population loss is harder. Study of the tooth enamel of Procoptodon has given researchers clues to the type of plants it favoured, and therefore the type of environment it lived in. It seemed it lived in semi-arid conditions, and was heavily reliant on standing bodies of fresh water such as streams or lakes, more so than modern kangaroos. This would have put it in direct competition with humans, who were also reliant on these water sources. I guess it will need more evidence before reliable conclusions can be reached. Well that's all for today and as always I hope you've enjoyed the video and you've learned something new. If you did like the video, please consider letting me know by leaving a like and a comment and subscribing if you haven't already. I hope to see you next time here at Shredder Zoo. Goodbye.